Okay, so Max, um, give us your first question. All right, so how old were you when you first started playing and uh, were your parents supportive of you playing goalie or did they want you to be like a player? Um, well, my dad played Division One uh, at Merrimack College. He played goalie and then he played pro in Switzerland. Um, and my mom's from Switzerland, so she didn't really know a ton about hockey. Uh, so for me, my parents took me to the rink when I was two days old, you know, so I, I kind of always just had hockey in my blood. And uh, I think I started playing hockey, like skating when I was three or four and then played goalie when I was six for the first time, I believe. Cool. Um, my first question is how did NCAA hockey like get you noticed and got you um, entered into the draft? Well, I got drafted after my senior year of high school by Ottawa, and then I played I played one year in the USHL, and then I played three years at, at Arizona State. So I was already drafted at that point, um, but then I, I had a really good year my junior year, um, and things kind of went well, and we had a really good team, and we made the NCAA tournament. So it was a special season, and, uh, um, you know, for me, I was just lucky enough to be on the receiving end of a contract offer from Ottawa at the end of it, and Next thing you know, a couple of days later, I'm playing in the NHL, so it was pretty cool. Uh, what NHL team were you a fan of growing up? Uh, well, I'm from Boston, so I did like the Bruins when I when I was growing up. But once I got drafted, that all changed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what emotions were you feeling when you got drafted by the Senators? Well, my first draft year, I actually didn't get picked, and I actually talked to a lot of teams. And uh, I didn't get picked, and I was pretty beat up about it. Um, but then, you know, next year, I, I uh, my name came, came back up again for the draft, and I had a pretty good season my senior year of high school, and I didn't really talk to that many teams. And then um, I, I got drafted 199 overall, same as Tom Brady, so that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, I remember I, I thought I wasn't going to get picked again because that was only a few picks left in the draft. And then, um, and then I just, my phone blew up at the same time as my, my dad's phone blew up and we were like, something's going on here. So, um, it was my agent calling me and, and he just told me I got drafted. So I remember he was talking and I wasn't even listening. I was just like, I, all I heard was I got drafted and he was trying to tell me other things that I needed to know. And I was like, dude, I, I can't even hear you right now, man. <laughs> and I remember I was, I was on the phone with him, but I had my mom over my shoulder carrying her around the house, like celebrating. So it was cool. Yeah. Um, I know that you wore a C when you played for Cushing Academy, and what did that mean to you? Um, it was incredible. Uh, my senior year, uh, I was captain of the hockey team, soccer team, and the tennis team. So that was something that was really special to me, and, and I'm incredibly grateful um, to have been captain there. It was so much fun. I, I love my experience at Cushing, and to be a captain just made it that much better. Cool. Um, what was it like playing in your first NHL game? It was amazing. Uh, I had so many family and friends and I had my coach from ASU and my senior athletic administrator was there and my goalie coach and um, all my family, grandparents, um, you know, my two best friends from home. My brother was there. It was just a really special night. And um, it was so great that I was able to share it with so many people that, that I love and, and that I care about. So, um, you know, we lost, but it was uh, still a really special night and it definitely a dream come true. Um, what do you find was the hardest jump for you in your hockey career, like PB to Bantam, uh, Midget to Junior? Uh, I would honestly say that the most difficult jump for me was probably when I went from um, I went from public high school to to Cushing. So I went from um, Division Two North Andover High, uh, which is just public high school, and then I went to Cushing, where there's kids that were um, committed to Division One and kids getting drafted, and um, that was the biggest jump for me, where I really had to kind of put my foot on the gas and, and I realized that I really need to get a lot better if I wanted to be, be a player. So um, that, that first year was a big year for me and, and it was a big jump. Cool. Um, since you played against the Sabres, how did it feel to experience playing against players like Jack Eichel and Jeff Skinner? Uh, it was really cool. I mean, you know, your first game is, is always special no matter what, but to, get, to play against some of those um, really high-end players like them, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, um, Jason Pominville, who's been around forever, and um, that was really cool. And, and to play against so many uh, great players was was really special, and, and it made it really fun. 
Uh, do you have any uh, interesting uh, superstitions for uh, rituals on game days? I like to call them routines. I don't like to call them superstitions because superstitions makes it sound like if, it, if you, you don't do it perfect, you're not going to play well. Whereas a routine is just, uh, for me, it's just uh, the process that I go through each time I play. Um, not necessarily. I like to watch a couple episodes of The Office before a game just to, to relax a little bit and, and, and have a laugh because that show makes me laugh. makes me laugh a lot and takes my mind off, off the game and um, kind of calms me down a little bit. So uh, I'd probably say that. Um, nothing else too crazy i like uh you know morning skate i always like my goalie coach always feeds me a bunch of one-timers to start off the day so i like doing that too that's cool yeah um who is the first person you told when you got the call up to the nhl uh (laughs) well when i found out my agent called me and told me i was gonna be signing an nhl contract and, and playing and playing in a game um i was actually in the Sun Devil Athletics, like, uh, like training room. And, um, one of our trainers was in there and I was just getting some treatment from him and I just got the call and I just looked at him and I was like, I'm playing in the NHL. <laughs> and he just gave me a huge hug and, um, we were pretty good, pretty good, uh, friends there. So, um, that was pretty cool. But then right after that, I called my dad and, and called my parents. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty crazy morning. Um, outside of your professional career, what do you find is your biggest accomplishment? Outside of hockey? Yeah. Um, that's a tough question. I would, I would say probably graduating from ASU. Um, I just graduated from college this year. I'm taking classes online during my first year pro. So that was a pretty big accomplishment. Um, I would also say like some, one of the things I'm really proud of was, um, being captain of, of soccer and tennis. Um, my senior year, my at Cushing, just because those weren't my my number one sports, and and uh, to be named captain for those teams was was uh, something I'm really proud of. Cool. Um, how much like what's the difference in like attention to detail from the AHL and like into the A er, into the NHL? Well, I think I think uh, people don't really understand how close the two levels are. It's very similar. Um, Obviously, the NHL has that real, real high-end skill and talent, but um, the attention to detail is is incredibly high at both levels. Um, I was only in the NHL for a couple of days, so I don't have like a full season to compare it to, but um, the attention to detail was extremely high this year in, in the AHL, and um, that's something that, that Coach Mann in Belleville really, um, really prides prides himself and our team on is, is attention to details and um that the little things are actually going to be the big things coming in today. So that's something that's really um, a big part of, of playing professionally, no matter where, where you are or what league it is. Yeah. Um, what advice would you have for like a younger goalie trying to play to the next level or next stage group? I think the biggest thing is just understanding that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, I, I, I'm someone that that's tends to be impatient. <laughs> um, I, when I want something, I want it now. And, um, that's something that's helped me um, at times because it's helped me work for what I want and, and learn to work hard and go after my dreams. But at the same time, it takes so long. I can think about when I was in high school wanting to get drafted and wanting to commit to college. And now here I am having uh, been drafted and played Division One college hockey and played in the NHL. And um, I've done all those things. So when I look back on it, and, and that seems like so long ago, it just you know, you, you want to do something every day that's going to help you get to what you want, where you want or, or help you achieve your dreams or, or your goals. Um, and it doesn't have to be the biggest thing every single day. It can be as little as watching a hockey game or reading a hockey book or a mental toughness book or, um, you know, doing, doing an extra set of a, of a workout. It's, it's just doing something every day that's going to help you get to where you want and, and understanding that um, it may not be tomorrow that everything you want in life um is going to come true but eventually that day is going to come where it's for me I remember Wednesday night thinking well my whole life I've wanted tomorrow to be the day that I play in the NHL and tomorrow was the actual day I was going to play in the NHL but it took so many years to get there um so that's kind of just the way I look at it yeah yeah um uh how does it feel to have um, players you know who are regulars in the NHL, like Brady Kachuk and Thomas Chabot? 
Sorry, what was the question? Um, uh, how, how does it feel to have players you know who are regulars in the NHL? For example, Brady Kachuk and Thomas Chabot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, um, especially when I was playing in the NHL last year, it's just really cool to be around so many guys that um, have had success in the NHL, especially like Craig Anderson and Anders Nielsen. Um, those guys are, um, you know, special players and, and awesome goalies, and um, it's really cool to learn from them even if it was just for a few weeks and um, just to kind of bounce ideas off them and talk to them and um, learn about how to be a pro and how to be an NHL. It was uh, really, really cool. Uh, where do you see yourself and where do you want to be playing in like five years? Well, the, the hope for me is that uh, I'm, I'm a starting goalie for the Ottawa center is that's kind of my goal right now. And um, that's something that every, every pro hockey's hockey player wants to do is, is uh be the starting goalie for, for an NHL team. And that's something that, that I definitely want to do um, or be, uh, you know, soon, but um, knowing, knowing myself and um, my path so far, I just need to be patient and keep working hard and, and hopefully that'll come true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you played um, in your first NHL game, what words of advice did your teammates give you? And um, especially um, what advice did your backup give to you? Uh, yeah, everyone, including because Neil, Nielsen backed up that night. Um, everyone just told me to have fun and enjoy the experience and just to make sure I took it all in. And that's something that I really tried to do is just really enjoy the experience. I remember I looked up at my, my family, my friends as much as I could. And just um, they all had such big smiles on their face. And I had a smile on my face. And um, there's a really cool clip of um from the tv feed of, of me skating back to the net talking to one of the refs where i just have a big smile on my face and that's something that i'm really proud of myself for is just in, in you know in that moment of stress and pressure and um where it's such a big deal and you're on this big stage that um i was still able to smile and have fun and that's kind of just all i really wanted to do and that's what everyone um everyone told told me to do was just to hey go out there play your game be yourself and just enjoy it and have fun and that's something that i really tried to do uh, what was it like uh, to have your family at your first game? It was the best. Um, I was really fortunate to have them all there and all those other people there, like I, like I mentioned. Um, you know, to have them all there and to share that moment with them and share that game with them was something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, my last question is, what was the most memorable moment um, of your first NHL game? Just like, what do you remember the most? Uh, probably my first two saves. Um, I remember they had like three or four shots on net or sh a shot attempts that didn't get to the net right away at the beginning of the game. And I was like, come on, let me get a stop. Let me get a stop. And the next thing you know, Jack Eichel is making a no look behind the back pass through the neutral zone to Sam Reinhardt for a partial breakaway. And then I made a pad save and then a rebound save that he put right in my glove. And I just remember, um, you know, my first two stops in NHL were, uh, pretty special ones. So that was, that was a pretty cool, a memorable moment. Uh, what were the meaning, what's the meaning behind your numbers that you've used so far? So I've been 35 basically whenever I've been able to since, since I started my freshman year high school because uh, of Corey Schneider. I wore number one in youth hockey growing up because of Andrew Raycroft and Corey Schneider at Boston College. But then when, uh, when Corey went to Boston College, or uh, he went to Vancouver, Luongo was one, so he had to switch to 35. And that year was my first year of, of high school, and our senior goalie was number one. So I had to pick a new number, and I picked 35, and I've been 35 ever since um, because of Corey Schneider. Nice. Nice. Um, so uh, I don't have any more questions. Max, do you have any other questions? Oh, yeah, I got one more. Uh, so throughout your career, have you ever been like a primarily like a backup goalie, and how do you deal with that mentally? Well, I think growing up, um, and as you grow older and you go through the hockey ranks, you're always going to have time times in your backup, um, and you got to earn your ice. I think um, my sophomore year at Cushing Academy, my first year at prep school, uh, we played thirty something games. I only played like ten or twelve games, um, and I just kept trying to take advantage of my opportunities and, and earning more ice and earning more ice time and more playing time and. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to go through that, but I think the biggest thing is just taking advantage of every day of practice um, so that you're as prepared as you can possibly be when the game comes around. And 
um, not putting too much pressure on yourself that you have to be perfect when you get that game. You just got to be, for me, I try to be average Joey because I think average Joey is a really good goalie. So if I play like average Joey, it's going to be above average compared to most people. And that's kind of just my mentality. Um, so for me, I just try to be average me every night. And if I'm average me, then, then I'm going to be pretty good and I'm going to, I'm going to have success. So um, I try not to put too much pressure on myself and just take advantage of opportunities that I'm given um, at any level and, um, you know, hopefully make the most of them. Nice. Thanks. Um, well, thank you so much for have or yeah. spent for taking some time and um, letting us interview you. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks All for right. Coming. Thank you.